That is such a Stress and anxiety inducing fear. I did have to quarantine for two weeks. Technically, they dictate your work. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, and we are here with another wine night. Today, I, oh, well, at first, I'm drinking the same thing as last time, the Penrose Hill. I swear I'm almost done with this one, but I want to finish it before I continue to move forward with my other wine, so here I am. Today, I thought I would talk a little bit about what I feel like I've learned through the pandemic, COVID, coronavirus, whatever, however you refer to it. I think it's taught us a lot, and I kind of wanted to go over the things that I've learned. Before I get started, I just wanted to remind you guys that in the description below, I have the Google form for the tattoo video. If you're interested in participating in it, please participate. It would be really, really awesome. I would love to see. That is such a loud car. Oh my God. Jeez. <laughs> I would love to see your guys' tattoos. And in addition to that, if you guys ever have any ideas for true crime videos, definitely leave it in the Google form that is always in the description as well. So both of those links are in the description below and let's just get started. So first off, let me go over things that happened with me during COVID. I know that this is a little bit more on my end, but I'm curious as to what's going on with you guys during COVID as well. I'll start with that. First off, I lost my job, which was kind of terrifying because I think that was like one of my biggest fears was losing my job. I've personally been working since I was 15 years old, so I don't remember what it's like to not have a job. But second of all, someone close to me actually got COVID. Another thing that happened was I had a boss that didn't understand the risks of COVID, it seems. We'll get into that as well. But another piece of this is I've had to have tougher conversations with friends and family regarding COVID and different things that we can or cannot do. From these items that I've mentioned, I'm going to kind of stem off into what I've learned about each of these things. Here's my what I've learned section. But number one was losing my job. And as I mentioned, this was like my number one stress and anxiety inducing fear was losing my job. Like to a point where years ago I was going into therapy stressed out about, am I going to lose my job? I feel like I'm not doing well enough. What am I going to do if I do lose my job? And so on and so forth. Because of different situations that I'm in because of my choices, going to school, things like that. It was a really hard time for me where I couldn't just be okay if I lost my job. I would immediately have to find something else. And I learned that I was okay. I was able to build up a savings account that I'm proud of. I was able to get unemployment, which I am so lucky that I got unemployment at the time that I did because I got the extra 600. I also had the benefit of being able to tell people I lost my job because of COVID. And so that didn't reflect negatively as to why I might've lost my job. For any Anyone else it can be like oh I wasn't performing well enough or I wasn't doing this I wasn't doing that but for me it was just everybody lost their job and so I was lumped into this group and so it didn't reflect anything that I did wrong necessarily again because it was one of the scariest things that I thought that I would ever go through it was really empowering at the same time actually going through it just because it proved to myself how resourceful I can actually be how much money I can actually save how little money I actually need to spend in each month how frugal I can be how well I can budget and so on and so forth so things that I thought were important before turned out to be not so important anymore to me and I was really proud of where I had come Number two thing was that someone close to me got COVID. And while that's one of the scariest things that's happening right now, there's a lot of people talking about how much COVID affects your body, the long-term effects, getting hospitalized, so on and so forth. I did have to quarantine for two weeks just because I had seen this person and just to be safe and be respectful to my coworkers and everything like that. I was nervous at first. And just like the elevator situation, it's interesting because when these things come up, I find that where I thought I would be super anxious and stressed out, I turn into this sort of like, well, this is where we're at. What are we going to do now? Kind of attitude, which I'm thankful for. I'm glad that I don't freak out. And instead, I just try to figure out what to do next. And I appreciate that about myself. And I've surprised myself with that. And that's something that I've definitely learned as well. I was grateful that they were okay. And it also just proves to me that we can be as safe as possible, but we can still get it. And so just trying to be 
be extra safe, always washing my hands. I realized also that I don't know enough about how all of this works in travels and whatnot because I don't know how I didn't get it, but somehow I didn't. So it's just, I don't know, it was just like a weird mix of emotions during that time, but it really just taught me to roll with the punches and try to take it day by day because that's all I could do at the time. The next thing was that I've had a boss that doesn't understand COVID and this one was a little tough because it's already hard to have tough conversations with people that you're close to in life but when it's someone like a boss that technically they dictate your work and your income it's scary because you have this mental battle of do I fight for things that relate to COVID or do I just listen to my boss and go to work and not say a word and I've really had to figure out that balancing act and it's been really tough for me. I I have had to learn that I cannot change how other people think. I can only change my actions and I have to also again take these things day by day. Because of this I've also learned that I have certain boundaries that I'm not willing to cross and I think that's really important to know and I don't think that that means that you should storm out of your job or anything like that but I think that it's okay to find a place that you're more comfortable at and that's exactly what I've done. I found a new company that I think will be so much better and I'm excited to move to that company. I've had to learn how to protect myself and luckily to an extent they've listened but it's been a mental battle and it has been stressful so it's just something to take note of of again where are my boundaries at what's worth fighting for and what's not worth fighting for and finding that balancing act is tough I am lucky enough to have a friend that is close to me that is a pharmacist and I've been able to ask her questions because sometimes I'm doing research and there's contradictory information or there's not enough information on something or the exact question I'm trying to ask I can't find the answer to so having a chance to just text her and ask her a question really helps me out a lot makes me feel less stressed and while I take everything that people say with a grain of salt of course because I know that she's not necessarily a COVID expert she's a pharmacist I also know that she's in it right now she has way more knowledge than I do so I trust her and I know that she's gonna play it safe as well. So that has also helped me just finding resources that I can trust that I can go to and ask questions to. I think the last thing has just been learning how to navigate conversations with people regarding COVID. It's been really tough, you know, having a roommate, we have different boundaries and overall, I'm so, so grateful that we are on the same page about a lot of the stuff, but there are some things that we differ in and having those conversations when I don't know her super well, having conversations with my boyfriend or my parents, it can be really hard because people have one, turned this into a political issue and luckily with my friends that's not the case, but also it turns into like a matter of people thinking that you're saying that they're not being safe and that's never what I mean, but I've also had to learn how to come across the right way to people and ask questions so that I don't seem like I'm being condescending or anything like that and I'm just asking questions. We've never really lived in a time where we've had to ask how many people are you seeing? Are you guys going to be outside? Things like that. And it adds a lot of stress when you're choosing to see somebody. And I mean, obviously the answer is just stay inside. But at the same time, we do have to see people. I have to go to work and things like that that happen. We can also just be safe about it. We can be outside. We can make sure we're wearing masks. We can understand data and figure out a good way to do this. So I don't agree with, you know, some people online that are just having parties and not wearing masks and things like that. But when I see a group of people outside picnicking, they're bringing their own food and they're all six feet apart on their own blankets, that's fine. Like you have to socialize from time to time. Overall though, I will say that especially with like losing my job and having to reassess what even is important, COVID has really taught me to understand what makes me happy and how to be happy in life. That's a huge part of it. I mean, we have to make sure that we're happy and if we are going to work every day miserable or if we're doing something every day that makes us miserable, of course, we can't just quit everything on the spot, but let's figure out a way to make ourselves happier. And I think that's really important as well, reassessing what makes us happy, what's worth it and what's not, and what kinds of conversations to have, when to let go of things. These are all important things that I think I've personally learned over the course of 
all of COVID and questions that I've had to ask myself and to others. Number one thing seems to be stay healthy and happy and everything else will kind of fall into place. So that's basically what it all boils down to for me. It's a lot easier said than done, of course, because there are so many things that go into that, but it's really, really important to focus on your happiness and your health. That's number one right now. Like health is almost like currency right now. It's kind of crazy. And luckily with all of the vaccinations happening now, hopefully things will get a little bit back to normal. But overall, those are the lessons that I've learned during COVID. So I'm curious to know what lessons you feel like you've learned. If there's anything that resonated with you, let me know. Otherwise, if there's something that you specifically feel like you learned during COVID or something that's happened, leave it in the comments below. I'm very curious. I always love hearing your guys' thoughts and opinions. I hope you guys are having a really great weekend. And don't forget, if you want to participate in the tattoo video, submit down below in the Google form. And I will see you on Tuesday.